she was just a hate-filled fucking dickhead, um, you know, and, uh, and it felt like she was trying to fuck over my world, and that's what the fuck she did, you know, it, I was gonna have to fucking jump through 50 different hoops from this psycho, and then at the end of the 50 hoops, she was gonna fuck over my world, instead she just kind of fucked over my world a lot before, um, you know, way before then, so, I mean, she did exactly what the fuck, um, it, it's, and, um, you know, somebody else that I was going to work with, too. So I had, there's an alternative school, which actually sounds good. It seems like people put in there that have behavior issues, but they have a one-on-one -on -one school. So, you know, if they have serious or drug issues, they go there. But it's a one-on-one -on -one school. There's a computer for each child. Emphasis on incorporating technology. Basically, you get a real education if you go into the alternative program. You don't get to hang out with the other kids, but, I mean, the other kids are just following orders, so it's not even like you're you're creating a, a relationship. And then this is the last uh, payment. You had some Gina, Gina Kuzman or some, I don't know, but she was charging me for 18 days. 18 days when I only went for four days, and then they fucked me after the fourth fucking day. So you're going to fucking ruin my whole fucking life, steal 50 fucking thousand dollars, and then on top of that, you're going to, you know charged me for 18 days instead of four when i told gina that immediately she turned into a psycho no you owe me money and then she went to go tell uh richard hudson you know because that's how it works right you, you, a woman tells you what to do and if you don't do it then they fucking go tell a man and therefore you have to fucking be obedient no absolutely not yeah you know you you're sitting there ordering me to give you money that's what you, you've been holding in financial aid financial aid held my money send my check to the wrong address four or five times they never sent it to the right address i had to uh, to find out about the teach grant even though she, you know it was being offered but she never said that it was being offered and um, this is my fucking money fifty thousand dollars they held onto my fucking money they treated me like an asshole about it um, didn't give me you know the money that I was supposed to have and um, and for what all of this for what you know, 55 knew nothing riots actually was very much um, integral in my development as a human being uh, I grew up around a bunch of white supremacist confederate flag waving fucking just ignorant ass fucking dumb fucking backwards hillbillies who were proud to be ignorant and racist and loud about it. I think they were slaves themselves and they were dark skinned so they probably were called Mexicans so they wanted to be they wanted to out racist the other racist whites in order to be part of the white race right that's how important the white race was to them they got suspended or in trouble for wearing a confederate flag they would sit there and tell black people that they loved to hang them you know one day they didn't give a shit what they thought their thoughts about anything was and um, and it was really fucking bullshit. And but we were Germans. We I was a group shovers. Okay, so uh, we were Germans, and uh, we came in here August twenty first, eighteen sixty nine, which was uh, you know uh, it was fourteen years. Um, after the 1855 Know Nothing Rights, but 14 years. So, you know, if you were zero, you'd been 14 years old in that time, or if you were, you know, 14, you'd be 28. So that's not that long ago. It's, it's very relevant. The uh, onrush of immigration, I think you should talk about it before this civil war had happened because this uh, era happened for a long time. There's two waves, two major waves. Um, one before the 1848 revolution, so Karl Mar Marx writes the Communist Manifesto, and then they try to have revolutions. They failed. The 1848ers came to America. That's why you had a lot of Germans here. Now the Irish came here because they had a potato famine, 1850s. So the 1850s, they had the Irish famine. Then you had the uh, militarism and the warmongering Prussians, um, who was driving all the good Germans out of Germany. So that's that starts the immigration, and it also talks about everything it's, it opens up every avenue for anything that you want to talk about it talks about the reasons why they left the push and pull factors and it talks about how they um, the native white anglo-saxon protestants reacted to these german speaking uh sort of j little germanies and little irish towns that were popping up all over the place they were not happy white people are so fucking racist they're against the germans and the irish and the italians anybody that wasn't white anglo-saxon protestant so they hated the catholics they were you know christians but they were the right christians they were the baptists and they're Episcopalian, and they were the, um, you know, the anybody else that isn't a Catholic. So here's a Know Nothing Party, right? So just to give you some lessons, uh, Know Nothing Party was a movement, um, American political movement operated on a national basis during the mid 1850s. 
right? So the mid-1850s, that's when the movement was actually starting, and you sit there and say you can't talk about the know-nothing. This is a, a question on the AP U.S. History exam. By her preventing, Julie Chancellor of JCPS prevented the children from knowing this. This is the most important, this clearly has to be the most important fucking thing in the world because they're acting as if I'm, like, you know, I'm telling them some fucking secret that nobody should ever fucking know. Like, is that set? Does that make sense? You know, should you have a fucking secret? Like, that's uh, knowledge. Some knowledge is good to know, but other knowledge is Like, I mean, this isn't even, like, this isn't even dirty or raunchy or, like, you know, too gory or graphic. This is totally relevant in American history as well as Louisville history and uh, my personal family history. So, um, it's... You know what I mean? Like, in the two and a half years, I could have actually got a job. But that's what I was talking about, the certification process. So two and a half years, right, two and a half years at Spalding University did all this fucking work, and I didn't have a job. I would have liked to have had a job. I would like to have done what I come here to work on, right? And um, and so uh, the, the actual thing that, uh, like, go to any online programs that you have several uh, schools throughout Kentucky and you could do one class, go to Moorhead University and after you pass one class you get temporarily certified and you can start teaching right away. So these... Uh, Spalding University's ways is absolutely defunct. They're fucking backwards, and since it's going to be like the house of Hudson and fucking Rogers and Mangio now, they're going to go straight back into the medieval age. They fucking looked at me and they said, well, that person's an aberration. He's fucking different than everybody else. Yeah, yeah, I can't fucking stand oppression. I'm so glad you like motherfuckers that are comfortable with oppression and will become fascists themselves. They'll be fucking Nazi fucking bossy fucking assholes just barking orders at everybody as if they're supposed to be their fucking followers. You're not teaching anybody by barking orders at them. You teach them by saying, believe in yourself and go, Johnny, go. Go, Susan, go. Go, whoever, go. You can do it. And the plenty of encouragement. Uh, and, you, and if you force somebody to learn math, they're going to hate math forever. But if you make them like math and make it enjoyable and fun, they'll, they'll want to learn it forever. So being able to get that hook in people and get them curious about the subject material is absolutely essential. If you don't do that, you lost. You lost. You are forcing knowledge down their throat and they're just going to hate. They're going to have an aversion towards your program for the rest of their life. All right. So, yeah, don't, uh, nobody go to fucking Spalding University, they will wait two and a half fucking years, and they will fuck with you for two and a half fucking years, they won't, you know, for $50,000, they did not give me a good ass education, and for $50,000, none of my fucking fellow colleagues thought that they deserved something fucking better, maybe they're just a bunch of lazy assholes, or they just want to kiss Mass's ass, so make sure if anybody else has any influence, just fucking shit all over them, um... Say online program, you just go to school for a couple months, then you're certified and you can get a job. For two and a half years, Spalding University fucking, they fucked me over. They made me fucking chase a fucking carrot that they never was had any intention of giving me. And um, and it was a $50,000 carrot. So they made me chase a $50,000 carrot, which they, they never, you know, had awarded me. They never encouraged me to, in order to ride the bike to educate properly on someone riding a bike, you get on the bicycle. So in order to get on the bicycle, you start teaching. That's what I'm talking about, getting in the classroom and actually teaching. That's how this uh, Moorhead, Moorhead online program, you can get on, you know, uh, the, t the classroom. If you have a bachelor's degree, you get an education degree, you get right in the classroom after you pass one of your classes, which is great. You can start building. You have to do all these volunteer hours and stuff. You can build your resume. You can talk to people, get your foot in the door, make a little bit of money possibly, do an internship, something. Something, but instead you have to be, you know, the Spall University just forced you to be on the fucking side all the fucking time. Effective teaching methods, which is what, what actually the books that I'm reading now. Curriculum development, that came out of Moorhead University, that's what they're reading over there. The Short Bus, Thinking in Pictures, so these are more uh, deeper books when it comes to autism and some of the disorders that people are going to have to uh, run into. So, you know, they also not only does it seem like the uh, uh, online programs are better in terms of their career certification, but in terms of their overall education, they get you into the books, they get you doing the quizzes and stuff, that's the best way they know how to assess you, and so it's great, it's wonderful, instead of getting dressed up just to be somebody's slave, you know, going out, you, can, you do it at your house, and then it's just, you have to read the material and do the things on yourself, so you do your work, then you'll actually get, you'll pass. This is, you know, this is right. They don't, it's, the Spalding University is the exact opposite. Right now they're talking about whether or not performance should be tied with pay. And uh, performance should be tied with pay because if you don't pass, if your students don't pass and you didn't teach, you didn't do shit. Um, yeah, a, a student could be, 
sort of like just say, I never want to learn, I never want to learn, but it, I think most of it is not so much their laziness and don't want to learn, but the fact that the teachers are, don't, are held to account to nobody, they don't want to make learning fun or interesting, and nobody's making them uh, make learning fun and interesting, basically, it's like, well, your teacher told you to do it, so just be a fucking slave, get dressed up, go out here, just be a slave in front of all my fucking peers, so that way we all fucking look at each other, and we're like, oh, okay, you're a slave, I'm a slave, who gives a crap, nobody cares about any of us. No, no, we should have solidarity. We should care about one another. Dialogue is how we learn. Life is going to teach us regardless. And um, schools should not add to the struggle of life, but actually ease the burden of it and help with liberation. Be taken off the, uh, the mailing list or email list, right? I don't have access to my email anymore. So clearly, and also my, all my works and everything that I've submitted, they basically it's all fucking you know, washed down the rabbit hole. I might be able to dig up some of this stuff, but there's uh, Richard Hudson, Richard G. Hudson, like a fucking creepy fucking molester, I have asked him not to fucking send me any fucking emails, but like a fucking creep, or like a fucking rapist who doesn't give a shit about consent, he just keeps on fucking, you know, uh, filling up my fucking inbox, <laughs> he just keeps on fucking sending emails over and over again, right, look at all this, this um, you know, from May, I got a couple of them actually, just like recently, so... This is, I haven't been part of uh, uh, Spalding University since uh, January of this year. So this, these all fucking emails are emails after he's uh, stole $50,000 away from me in two and a half years worth of work and still wants me to fucking know about what the fuck he's thinking. Man, fuck you. Quit fucking sending me shit, you fucking piece of shit. But he doesn't, he's a hypocrite. So you ask him to fucking, you know, to respect your fucking boundaries, but he doesn't care. He just spams the shit out of your fucking... Um, you know, email, and it's a, uh, it's a bullshit. There's nothing that this motherfucker could say that I would ever give a fuck about. Spalding University's mission statement, right? They say they're a diverse learning, but really they're just uh, oppressing everybody. So that's how they're like equal, right? They treat everybody equally. Fucking shitty. Doesn't matter your race, uh, intellect, uh, gender, culture. Doesn't matter. You're just a fucking student. Sit down. Shut the fuck up. Dedicate to meeting the needs of the times. Yeah, that's what the Catholic Church has always been known for, right? Quality undergraduate and graduate liberal professional studies. No, $50,000 for absolute fucking shit education. Absolute shit. Grounded in spiritual values. No, they'll destroy your soul and your spirit and any um, value systems that you might have. Uh, that's all they give a fuck about. Service and the promotion of peace and justice. They give a shit less about the war or about justice or just a bunch of hypocritical uh, professor molester oppressors. That's that's the mission statement. To oppress and molest and to waste all your fucking money. Um, if you're a good slave, you know, go to fucking Spalding University. But if you actually want to educate yourself and learn something and learn new ideas and to become a better person uh... go to moorhead university or go to any other place except for this fucking shithole Spalding university fucking they they suck so julie chancellor's ways basically she doesn't know how to teach students let alone teach someone how to be a teacher um, here's how you, uh, just different things six steps to be a good Co-teacher, you establish a report, you know, get to know the other person, ask them about their business. She actually pretended like she didn't fucking know that I had fucking got jacked and shit and that I wasn't able to fucking show up for the first day. But they called her and they told her no and then she played fucking stupid and then just kept a fucking, you know, a, a angry face and angry demeanor up the whole time. Wasn't curious about my life or what I had been or what I had done. Um, and so it was really just uncomfortable. It wasn't a safe and positive environment for me. And if, uh, if it was switched the other way around, if a, w a woman did not feel safe in my, you know, in my uh, jurisdiction, I'm sure that would have got their attention, but I'm a man, so who gives a shit, right? So identify your teaching styles and use them to create a cohesive classroom. So, you know, you kind of just, just basically talk to each other and relate to each other. Discuss strengths and weaknesses. Discuss IEPs, regular education goals. None of this. Formulated plan of action. Unified team. Nope, nope, nope. Unified team. She just wanted me to be a slave. That's how she could understand things. Take risk and grow. So, you know, um, I, I took a risk by saying, hey, am I allowed to talk about the Know Nothing riots? And she's like, no, it's my classroom. Um, can we have a discussion about it? Absolutely not. I'm going to call your boss and fuck your whole life up. And they did. That's what the fuck they did. So, let's see here. Understand American history, you need to understand, you know, that eras and periods overlap. Uh, Julie Chancer, JCPS, does not understand that, uh, 
uh, eras and periods overlap. In fact, the Native Americans consider most white history the 500-year occupation, right? So it really depends on who you are and your vantage point and where you're seeing it. The Reconstruction Era, the reason why it's important to know that there's a large immigrate and the Im influx of immigration of the Irish and German Catholics before the Civil War and after the Civil War, there's two major waves. Um, it's just so the continuity, right? They're still coming to America, so it's still bad um, in Europe. And then also the nativists still reacted the same way uh, with their hatred of foreign, you know, um, peoples and ideas and cultures and foods and, um, you know, ways of life and language. They really hated the German tongue. They really hated, you know, um, not the Irish. I guess they speak like a, an Ir, a Gaelic language or, or maybe like an Ir, I don't know. They got an accent, right?